Hi, I'm Marge Lyford, and I work primarily in the Fall River campus, but I do come here about twice a month to help people with in interviewing, resume writing, um, or often it's, I don't know what I want. What, how do I start? And so we, we, start, we start there. Uh, a lot of things that we like to give to a student would be some career assessments. How many of you have taken uh, their, assess their assessments called um, Myers-Briggs and another one called the Strong Interest? Has anybody ever taken those? Ah, useful? Useful. useful. And I found uh, when I first came to the college to work, I, did, I had never heard of Myers-Briggs. And so uh, one of my now co-workers came in and brought it and I took it and I kept saying, ah, you can't, you can't figure something out just by your likes and your dislikes. Well, I got my results back and it was like, how do they know this stuff? <laughs> it, was, it just blew my mind. And when I read, everybody gets very special results back. One, so, uh, and with Myers-Briggs, there are 16 what they call types of people. And so, I, again, very skeptical. You can't put somebody in a type, my God. And when I got my, my results back, and you'll have to excuse my French, I, I read my results and I said, Oh, no wonder I pissed them off. <laughs> because what I was doing as a child and an adult, I was, I was really annoying people with certain things. And I'm sure we all have done that. So the career interest stuff really helped me personally as well as looking at careers and say, all right, I'm on the right track. I need to do more of this, less of this. Uh, but it helped a lot. So what I'm doing today, I'm doing a lot today. But I want to start off with how do I explore who I am and what I need to do. Now, uh, when I came, I, I said, all right, I've got to park at the uh, Zyterian Theater, and therefore, I can only carry what I can carry. So if we need copies, we may. But what I want to do is start out with, it's just a who I am. So I'm not sure if we have enough copies. I'm not sure if we have enough or not. That's, uh, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. I may be pretty close to, okay. What that first one says is I am so and so, such and such, and then looking at the skills that I have. Now, how many of you don't feel like you have a skill? Good. When I first, this was years ago, um, I had been teaching school in, in middle school in Vermont. And when I moved down, the, the superintendent that I spoke to said, lady, I haven't hired anybody in 10 years. And I thought, whoa, I, I just assumed I would just jump right back into a teaching job. And so I was really shocked. And he said, well, uh, tell me what your skills are. And I said, skills? I didn't think I had any. And I didn't even know what the word meant. So I went back, it was a great book, What, what Colors Your Parachute was sitting there. Uh, and it talked to me about knowing what you can do. Now, when you, uh, on your form then, what, and we, we're not gonna fill out the whole thing, but go, th Pick out one identity that you have. You could be a brother, a sister, a parent, a uh, team worker, S something in your life that really stands out with who you are, and then list some things it takes to do that well. So just very quickly. <clears throat> right here. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> I read lips. <laughs> Did we have enough? I brought 20 of everything thinking, all right. <laughs> a 
Troy, would you also be my timekeeper because okay. it's behind me and I don't see that. <laughs> so um, I'll be doing this until probably looks like 12 o'clock. Yeah. So awesome. maybe about quarter of go. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Stop where you are. Does anybody have an identity? Thank you. I'm sorry? Friend. Friend. Ah. Is that a hard thing to be? Yes. Yes, it is. Yes. It, what are some of the skills that it takes to be a friend? I need to forget, remind myself I'm in front of the camera here. I haven't written anything down, but um, one would definitely be uh, you know, caring. Ah. Care about the person. Yeah. How many of you sometimes don't care about the person who's your friend? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or you don't want to. So very, those are, that's excellent. Um, do you have communication skills with your friend? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Does everybody have communication skills? No. no. <laughs> How many times have you spoken with somebody and they're not listening to you? It's like, two streams of conversation. I, I listened to my brother and sister do that. They hadn't seen each other in uh, almost a year. And I'm, I'm sitting back listening to the conversation. Da -da 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 Neither is listening to the other one talk at all. So a skill in being somebody who can hold a good conversation, but also be a good listener. In other words, respond back to that person when they're talking, not just waiting for your turn to talk. We have great stories and we gotta tell them this story, I gotta tell you this story, and we're not listening to that other person. Now, when you're job hunting, part of our job is to listen to whoever's talking to us about what they do for work or just an interesting thing about this type of work. And so, very important that you look at your list of skills and say, all right, yeah, I'm a, I'm a good friend, but also we can put that into the job market and say, I'm a good coworker, right? I'm gonna pick on you for a minute here. And this, what happens is a good coworker says, I get along with people. I'm able to listen to their needs. I'm also able to express myself. And so just, just being a good friend kind of lends to other things. Anybody else have another skill? Yes? Um, skill or? Start, start with the identity. Start with mother. the Mother, ah, big job. <laughs> big job. And then a skill for being a good mother. Um, patience. Ah, huge, huge, yeah. In other words, sometimes putting up with <laughs> stuff <laughs> that you have to put up with. Uh, so patience is huge, and in a, if we take that into a workplace, what are some things that you might bring to the work sh workplace in terms of, of patience? How might you show patience to somebody? Well, if someone needs some help and they're not quick like I am, Thank you. I'm yeah. I was talking to a young man yesterday about what he liked to do, and he says, well, I, I really like working with computers. And I said, well, in our work world, we have three basic skills in life. We have people skills, we have information skills, and we have technology skills. So people skills would be listening, being a good friend. Information skills is absorbing information about something. It could be a lot of stuff and the technology is fixing things. Now he has, basically he has two skills that he wants to use. He has information all about computers. He has the technology of putting computers together. What he doesn't like using is what? People skills, right? He doesn't, he doesn't want to be a customer service. How many of you don't want to be customer service? Yeah, a lot of you, that's a hard job. You have to be nice to people. <laughs> and you have to fake it sometimes when, you, when you're not happy with wh where you are. So for this guy, I'm saying stay out of customer service if you don't like working with people. But what you could be maybe one of those computer geeks, customer comes in, this is what I need 
this is why it's broken or what, what's broken. And this guy can then kind of soothe him down because we all freak out when our computer dies. And we, we, he may be talking to him about this is what you need to do. But basically, he's not having this whole nice, nice conversation. And so when you're looking at the skills that you have as a mother, people skills, information skills in all ways, and technology, you know how to fix a washing machine. Technology is anything to do with your hands, working with your hands. You know how to cook, maybe. <laughs> yeah. And so, or you might even have a skill of the car's broken down. I know what's wrong with it, I need to do this, and so on. So when you, are, when you are looking at different types of jobs, you're also looking at yourself and saying, what skills do I have? And then you, could you have the skill but not want to use it? Absolutely, absolutely. And so in that way, you decide, I'm going to apply for this job because it does this and this, but maybe not this. When I applied for this job many hundred years ago, I applied for it because it required working with students, working with people, in a sense passing out information all about all kinds of stuff. I did not want to do budgets though. So that's in the information section, but I didn't want to do them. And I didn't need to have technology skills because there were other people to do that. So when you're even looking at jobs, there may be little sections of the job you say, I don't want to do that, so don't apply for it. If you and for him, he's saying, but but all all jobs require customer service. I, and I said, yeah, but in small doses, large doses, you have to decide what's the dose you want. So be very discriminating as to the job itself and what goes into that job. And if you feel as if that's not for me because it does this a whole lot and I don't want to do that then you know that you have skills in this and this and this. And eventually, when we get into interviewing, you're going to have to talk skills. Now, why does the, in, why does the interviewer, and I'm going to skip over a, a time here, but why does the interviewer want to know about your skills? Yeah. You are bringing money to this guy or woman. And so skills are, can, we put down into money. Okay. Bottom line, right? You're there for a job so you can make money. They're hiring you so you can make, you can make money for them in, in all kinds of ways. So be very understanding about what type of skills you have. And uh, what I also then want to do, I have what is called a SWOT chart. Sorry undo this. Now they're going to be two things that go with the SWOT chart. One will be an actual definition. And I'll go through it quickly, but one is actually a, just a chart. Okay. Oh, all right. Okay. So there, there are there are separate ones. Yeah. Copy center didn't staple them. <laughs> now, what does SWAT stand for? SWAT stands for strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, threats. Is there anybody ever threatened by something they have to do. Yeah, yeah. And being aware of it is good because you're saying, boy, this scares me half to death. I don't want to do this. So for me, it was budgets. Just leave me out of those things. I did take a job with budgets one time, and I realized I can do it. I can get the right results. But I am working literally seven days a week, eight hours a day trying to make sure everything is straight. So for me, it realized it just takes too much stress for me to work in that. Give me the people, give me the information, I'm happy. So 
Know what threats are to you when you're job hunting. If you feel as if this is really going to create a lot of problems for you, stay out of it. Now, opportunities. I love working at the college here. All kinds of opportunities to do different things. How many of you get bored really easily? Yeah. If you have a high boredom rate, you need a job that does this and this and this and this, or opportunities to do this and this. So I'm switching uh, topics again. But when you're interviewing, you want to make sure that you do a tour of the place to find out what other types of jobs are involved in this job. So that when you get bored, you say, oh, I could do this also. I could do this. Uh, so boredom is not a bad thing. But it is a, like a flashbulb that says, all right, I need to try something else. I'm getting bored to death with this. So, so uh, your SWOT is then strengths. What am I really good at? Weaknesses. I can do it, but oh, I'm not really good at it. Opportunities, and what else can I do? And then the threats. What scares me to death? Now, what I'm passing out then uh, is a chart, and you're going to see it on the back here. If you, and we're not going to do the whole thing, but this, what this is going to do is help you to open up to yourself what you need to have. So here's a chart that says, what are my strengths? Can, do I have a volunteer telling me um, what are some strengths in their skill bank? What are they really good at? Anybody brave enough? Yes. I'm good at math, communication, persuasion, sales, technology, information. We covered a lot, huh? Yeah, good for you. Anybody else? Their strengths, yes. Leadership. I'm sorry? Leadership. Leadership. Being able to challenge people and get them to do the things that you need to get done? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't thought of it that way. But, but that's huge. Um, I just gave a workshop to a leadership class last week. And their job was to look at themselves personally and say, how will I be a good leader? And it's not always easy. So it is something where if you enjoy motivating people, getting people to do things a certain way, and they don't mind doing it, good leader, good leader. So, so on an interview, and again, I'm switching uh, topics a little bit. On an interview, they're going to ask you, what are your strengths? Horrible question sometimes. You want to give them the strengths that go with the job that you're applying for. <clears throat> One of my strengths is cooking. <laughs> I only want to do that a couple times a year. <laughs> I don't want to do it for a living, so I'm not going to apply for something that requires a lot of, Thanksgiving is my thing, and after that, somebody else cook. So you want to look at strengths in terms of, could I do this for eight hours a day? And that, the boy, that narrows things down. It, it's what I call get the romance out of the idea. If you can still do it for eight hours, you're good. Yeah. If you say, well, I could do it for Thanksgiving and that's it. That's not, it's a strength for Thanksgiving, but it's not a strength for, for a type of job. So you want to think about the things that you're really good at. Again, when I apply to this job, they ask me that question. What are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? And, and I said, well, I applied to this job because it is my strength. It is something I like to do. I like to work with groups. I like to work with individuals. And so this is why I applied for this job. So if you have the good fortune to be given a job description, you can look through it and say, all right, which duties are my strengths and which ones am I a little weak on? And in that way, you're able to decide do I really want this type of job? So career exploration is the whole area of looking at different types of jobs and the duties. Now, we were told, which is really great, um, on the website, type books that you can use to research types of jobs. Really, really important stuff. I also want to um, go over. And this is, this is through the Career Center. We bought, we, we bought a, um, a, 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 a section of career information. And this, they should be all pink, but they're not. <laughs> but, 
and it's called Focus 2. Now, Focus 2, they give you, they give you the directions here, so I won't use the board there, um, but they give you the directions of going to the BCC homepage and then click on to Students, Career Services, Career Planning, all of those, and then uh, your access code is going to be Career Center. And what, you, what it will do is it will ask you all kinds of questions about likes, dislikes, future goals, and it helps you to know yourself. So the very beginning of career planning is knowing what is it that I like and what is it that I don't like. So this, this is really a good program to go on to. It's huge, so you're not going to do it with one sitting. But it does help you in knowing yourself. And the more you know yourself, the more you're going to able to make better choices. And that's the whole name of the game, making good choices. Are you going to screw up and make bad choices? Yes. But the thing that you, you'll do then is to be able to say, this was a bad choice. You don't beat yourself up. You just move on. You decide maybe the, another job at this place would be better or out another place completely. And those, those are hard choices. But I think the more you know yourself, the no, more you know about what you're good at, what you're weak in, and what you'd like to develop more skills in, the better off that uh, you'll be able to do it. Now, the next thing about finding out about a job, once you, you start to boil things down to, oh, I might like to do this or this or this, and I'm going to kill you a paper here, but it's called informational interviewing. And I learned this from What Colors Your Parachute, Richard Bowles' book. Has anybody ever done an informational interview? It's a fancy word, and guys do it sometimes. They sit at the bar, what do you do? Da 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 da. Do you like it? How'd you get into it? Yeah, you know, what does somebody pay? Now, ladies, we tend not to do that. We talk babies, we talk food, we talk clothing. We need to talk work. We need to start getting ideas on things that might make us happy as a worker. So an informational interview is when you talk to somebody about what they do. Easy, hard. How I got into this myself, it was many, many years ago. I was in these pro grant written programs, which the grant came to an end. I, was, I came to an end. So, uh, I asked my friend Paul, I said, uh, you know, I think I might be good at human resources. Do you know anybody in that field? Uh, he says, yeah, my friend at St. Joseph's Hospital. So I said, can I give him a call and ask him just, just to talk? He says, oh yeah, you can use my name. So I called him up and the first thing the guy says, we're not hiring right now. Uh -uh. And I thought, oh. yeah. I said, no, that's, the point is I need to know about this field. I don't know a whole lot about it. Could I just come and talk to you about what you do? Well, I'm awful busy right now. I said, I only want 15 minutes of your time. I promise I won't keep you any further than that. All right. So I had my list of questions, which I'm going to give you. And I went there, and truly, I didn't want a job because I didn't know if I liked that, that type of work. But I said, I'm just starting out. I'm, I'm at a crossroads in my life, and I need to find out about this type of work. I think I'd be good at it, but I'm not sure. So he talked to me about all kinds of things that you do in human, human resources. And the very last question I asked him was, who else should I talk to? So he sent me to a guy at uh, Prudential Insurance who sent me to I gave him the last question again, who sent me to somebody uh, in a manufacturing, who sent me to somebody at a hospital. So I got to talk to a whole pile of people who did what I might like to do. At the fifth person, I went home, sat on the floor, and cried <laughs> because I realized that's not what I want. It was all paperwork, all working with information. I wanted people. and so. For me, it was a really good, tough exercise in finding out that it's not enough. I need to have more at my job. But it kept me from finding a job or being in a job I wouldn't be happy in. So it was disappointing, very disappointing, because I'm not somebody who just goes up to strangers and talks to them. 
And so it was a tough thing for me to do and, yet, and then find out it's not what I want. But it was a really good thing for me to do because it realized that's not what I want. And the thing is, when people I talked to, they, were sent, they sent me job openings. Ah, oh, we got a job opening here, you want to apply? And I had to say, thank you, but it's not the direction I want to be heading. Now, when you finish with an informational interview, you do want to send them a thank you note. How many of you have written a thank you note in the past year? <gasps> Yay. Good for you, good for you, good for you. The reason why it's good is because people remember you. Because they, they don't get thank you notes. And so when you do an informational interview, especially, you are taking their time up. And so when you think, and you don't need a, a fancy card, no kitties, no bunnies, or anything like that. Just, you know, just a nice little thank you note. If your handwriting is decent, handwrite it. Because it sounds like it's coming from the heart. If you type it, fine, but it's a little cold. So work on your handwriting. But send them that thank you note. You never know who they know that could you refer you to them or them or them. It happened. This is how I got into career planning. You remember I left teaching? I couldn't find a job. And I went and talked to people who did career planning. And finally, I found somebody. It was just this match. And I thought, wow, this would be an interesting job because I'm, I'm talking to people. I'm dealing with all kinds of information. I'm not doing budgets. You know, so all kinds of good stuff came out of that. And in the end, I talked to somebody. And she said to me, you know, we got a job coming up in the fall. Would you be interested in applying? Yeah. <laughs> and so for me, this was one step from one area into another because I took the time to go talk to a bunch of strangers about what they did. Okay. It takes courage, okay. and we all don't have courage. I had to work on that. But an informational interview, and I, let's just go through it quickly. Oh, time. Thank you. Thank you. You're going to be worth your weight in gold. <laughs> so when you're finding out about a career, on the first page, this is how you go get prepared for it and how you arrange it. It's usually by phone. It could be by email. And you're just saying, I'm in the process of researching a career. Could I talk to you about what you do on a, on a normal day? And if they say, no, I'm too busy, push a little harder and just say, I really won't take much of your time. And, and so what you're doing is you are controlling the interview by going in, asking some questions, stick to your time frame. At the very end, what question do you ask them? Who else should I talk to? Thank you, you were listening. <laughs> Who else should I talk to? That's the most valuable question you can ask them. And so I've given you. 20 questions you can ask. Number 20 is, who else should I talk to? Now, on the very back page, this, you're going to evaluate the person you spoke with. Is this the field I'd like to get into? How did it turn out? Uh, you know, and even write about how you felt about doing this. The more you analyze, more you look at what you're doing, the better information you're going to get. Okay, so this is a nice little packet I stole from someplace. Nothing is, <laughs> nothing is original with me, so don't sell it. But good stuff, good stuff. And the more you do this, the more comfortable you get doing it. It's like any other habit. OK. Where am I on this list here? All right. OK, what is next? is how to write a good resume. How many of you have never written a resume before? OK, I need to know kind of the bottom. Good. Why do you need a resume? I like your hat, so I'm going to pick on you. And help you get a job. Yeah, yeah, bottom line, bottom line. When I, when I went to talk to my superintendent about getting a teaching job, he said, send me a copy of your resume. I said, you want what? Now, I was 35 at that time. I had never in my life written a resume, because I never had to. When I did my student teaching, they came to my school and said, ah, oh, you're a live, warm, breathing person. <laughs> Let's put you into the classroom. And 
so I got jobs by, and when I moved to Vermont, I said, I'm, I've just bought some land in Vermont, I'm coming to, to look at teaching opportunities. Boom, got hired. And so I never had to do a resume, and it scared the life out of me. My first, how, how long should a resume be? Hmm? One page. Mine was seven. <laughs> I was married then. My husband says, you got to tell them everything. <laughs> so I did. <laughs> you know, all, all kinds of things, traveling, cooking, you know, uh, camping, all you know, nothing to do with what it is, but I gave them everything. Okay. It was also, and you're going to hit the buzzer here, it was also handwritten. I didn't know how to type. Now, somebody called, a friend of my husband's called me up and he said, I got a, I got a clerical job for you. John, I don't type. He says, what? All women know how to type. And I said, just because you have ovaries doesn't mean you can't know how to type. And he, you, know, you could see him. But the thing is, nowadays, every, almost everybody knows how to type, or at least do three fingers. It's, it's really changed the whole way we look at things. But when I'm, when I'm doing a resume, I realize I'm, I don't have that skill. Yeah, it, it's nothing to me. So, number one, I had to learn how to type just, just to do my resumes. Now, keep in mind, this was 100 years ago before they had computers. And so, what a gift computers have been. Oh, whoever invented, well, it was invented through the Army, was it? Anybody know the history of that? I think it was through the Army. And, you know, I kissed their feet because, my God, what a wonderful invention. But. I had to do everything, uh, and then they invented the Selectric typewriter, which at least had the eraser tape on it. So I, I've gone through the process of good, good inventions, and, but writing a resume was really tough for me because I didn't know how to do it. So I'm going to be giving you some possible ways of doing a resume. I killed a lot of trees today, so <laughs> there we go. Okay. Now, nice little packet. We're not going to go through it all. It'll bore you to death. But it's good for you to read because there's lots of really good information on it that I've stolen from all kinds of places. Okay. The very first page is just 10 steps. I'm not going over it with you. You can read. Uh, but there are things that you should ask yourself, does my resume have this, does my resume have this? And then on page three, I stole this from Resumes for Dummies, some jokes. Okay. You might find yourself in there. Okay. On page four, uh, it's a nice little cartoon by Gary Larson. I don't know if you're familiar with Gary Larson. I love his cartoons. But it's all about uh, one, guy, one guy saying to another, let's see, you make fire, good. You make tools, good. You hunt mammoths, good. OK. Oh, oh. Your references are all baboons, not good. <laughs> so we'll get to references, but know that you have to have the right kind of references. All right. Now, skills. I'm going to keep banging on you skills because you need to know what you have. You need to know your people skills your information skills, and your technology skills. What I recommend, I assume many of you have a computer, put this on your computer, maybe sideways instead of in columns. And think about the skills that you have that, and don't worry about where am I going to use them, just think about what skills I have. And then it would be really good for you to make one of these for the job itself. So you take their job description, if you have one, it's, it's sometimes a gift, a gift of God that you have a job description, because sometimes they're awful. But take line by line and put it into one of these columns. What it does is it help you to see, is this the job I want to apply for? You may realize, no, it's too much emphasis on people, let's say. I need to have more of an emphasis on doing information. So it gives you an idea of this job. It's also going to help you on your interview. So when you do one for yourself, when you do one for the job, both ways, it helps you to speak better for yourself. So don't neglect this. This is huge. 
Now, I'm going to skip over to page seven, Sonia Morena. Now, Sonia is just a fake person, um, but she's applying for a job. And could you give me a buzzer about a uh, quarter after 12? Okay. okay. Sonia is applying for a job, and she's applying for a job as a uh, manager in accounts receivable. So you can put your name and address, and don't forget your telephone number. People have forgotten that. Email address at the top. Now, what size font do you, do you need for a resume? Twelve. Thank you. Twelve. It's the first time anybody's ever said that. Yay. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Why do you need a twelve? Why not a nine or an eight? You can pack up a lot of stuff in there. I'm sorry? It's easier, it's easier to read. Thank you. Easier to read. Now, I'm guessing, I'm making this up, but the person who's reading your resume, they're usually over 40. <laughs> what happens to your eyes over 40? <sighs> gone. <laughs> yeah, gone, gone. And so I went, to, I, I started grad school when I was 45 and, and kept saying to the person next to me, man, he's writing small, <laughs> not realizing it was me. And the, the weird thing was, the guy next to me who was, who was deaf, excuse me, blind, and I thought, oh my God, there's no justice here. <laughs> the universe is playing jokes on me. So when you write a resume, you need the font like a 12 is, is pretty good. And it's going to help you uh, express yourself. Now, as you had said, one page is best. Two pages only if you have to. If you're my age, absolutely, <laughs> two pages. But basically one page if you can get it down to it. So 12 fits it in, and you're always going to be playing with space. That's the hard part, and you're going to keep Keep, thank God for the computer again because, man, you can, you can figure things out and move things around and so on. But when I walk you through this resume, make sure your name is top of the list. And then the basic information about your address, telephone number, all of that. Now, what is an objective? It's your goal. Yeah, the job you're applying for, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And now, my next question is, do you need one? Yeah, and why? Yeah. I had a friend who applied to the college, and her resume went from desk to desk to desk. Nobody knew what she was applying for. So this gives the reader the chance to say, oh, you're, you're applying for such and such. Or HR, it starts with HR, and then it moves around. So a good thing to, to know about that is just keep your objective short. Job title that you're applying for, the, maybe an industry that you want to work within, and maybe some skills if you have some space. I'm always hitting on skills. You're going to get sick of it, but it's one of the best things to know about yourself. So you're, with this lady, position managing an accounts receivable payable department, short and sweet. You don't need complete sentences. And something you need to keep out of your resume are pronouns. Anybody know what a pronoun is? <laughs> yeah, yay. <laughs> You're one of the few people that knows that. <laughs> so I, you, he, she, it, we, they, those are all pronouns you want to leave out of your resume. It is basically starting with verbs, action words. Now, if you. Keep your finger on this page, but go to the very back page, action verbs. This is what you're going to start your resume sentence with. So they're not complete sentences at all, but they show action. Show, I can do this. The yeah, yeah. So what you want, he, what this, I, I put this into sections of skills, but the hard part are words. You know, what word do I use for this? And you can't say the same word over and over and over again. So this is, it's not easy. Sometimes very, very helpful for you to get another pair of eyes, somebody else to read your resume and say, well, you could say it this way or this way. So 
Im important to do that. You can come to the Career Center. I'm here again a couple Mondays a month, mostly at Fall River. If you want some quick uh, service, go to Fall River. And I'm happy to review your resume for you. It happens all the time. And I can go over it. I am blunt. I'm very straightforward. If I say it's too cluttered, I mean it. And so there's no perfect resume, but one expresses yourself a little bit better. So let's go back to Sonia. Now, we have, and you're going to love this one, we have a summary. Now, a summary, you could also call it highlights, but a summary basically is my life in a nutshell. Maybe four statements that say, this is who I am about that job. Now, what I want you to keep in mind is that your objective, if you, Actually, let me, let me give you an example of a pyramid. If you have a pyramid, everything rests on that spot. And everything down here is just resting on this spot. So when you think, think of your resume, think of a pyramid, that you're asking yourself, does the rest of my resume answer my objective? I am applying for this job because, and therefore, Everything down there has to hold this up. Okay. Now, with your summary, you could say over 10 years of, of this or that. It, it kind of takes everything in your life and makes it into maybe four. Don't give, don't give them a whole lot. Four is good. Something I forgot to tell you about your reader. Your reader is exhausted. And if I can use the word, they're pissed off <laughs> because they have to look at this pile of resumes. You know, we've all had it. We, we, you know, the person come up to you, you're not doing anything this weekend. Here's a stack of resumes to read. Mm -hmm. And it happens all the time. So you want to make it easy for them to read and get right to the point of what you're applying for. So what I, I stole this from a resume book that they don't publish anymore. So don't lose this. This is great stuff. Thank you. And what it is, is just a whole packet of stuff on summaries, how to word summaries. What I recommend that you do, get a highlighter, and don't do this when you're tired and exhausted, and absolutely don't do this all in one sitting. Do it in little bits and pieces. But you're going to highlight the things that you say, oh, this sounds like me. And it's going to make you sound more professional. So you, words are hard. And so this is just a, a kind of a cheat sheet of words that you can use. And if you have a friend, make a copy and give it to them, but don't sell it because, again, I, I stole it from a, a resume book. A, a wonderful, actually a wonderful person called Yana Parker. I still use her resume books. She's really good at words. And so this is something where if you have Yana Parker's list of summaries, and there's tons of them. Pick out four, this is the hard part. Pick out four that you say has to do with this job. So you're always doing your objective. Everything relates to the objective. Now if you go down one, we have professional experience. Now this is what is called a, a chronological resume. You don't have to remember that. But it's year by year by year, starting with most recent. Now, if you've never written a resume, this is the easier one to do. I'm going to show you two, two styles. Um, but it starts with the date when you started this job, and maybe to present if you're still there, and the job title, and then the where you are. Again, no pronouns, nothing, just the basics. And then you're going to go backwards. And actually, you're going to give them a description, a quick description, starting with a verb of what you did at that job. Keep it short. Don't go on and on. And this is why I tell people you, your resume is too cluttered because it, your, your reader is tired. They're bored to death. We want to make it easy for them. Okay. And so then back in time to another job that you took to another job. Any questions about what information to put in? You will have them. But for example, yesterday I had a guy 
He's applying for com my, my computer guy. He's applying for computers, but did nothing but construction. What's he going to say on his resume? And that is the hard part. He worked for his dad he, all this time, but he loved, he built his own computer. So he's got some computer skills. He's in a computer program, but what do what do you say on an, on an, uh, on a resume that will tell the employer, I'm entry level, I'm beginning, but this is where I want to be heading. So if you go down to education, if you're in school right now, and most of you are, I would take education, and if you have a pencil or pen, draw a line, education, all the way up underneath the summary. That's where your education should go, because that's most recent. That's your job. Okay, so if, if where you're going to school is the most important thing, put that, put that next, right underneath summary. Now I'm going to turn the page a minute. Let's turn to page nine. Joy Holland. Now, Joy, Joy's resume is very similar to the other one, but Joy's is called a functional resume. It's what is my function. And I like this one because it really is easy to read. It's harder to write. So let me go through it. You have your objective. You have your profile or however they want to name that, your summary, however you want to name it. Keep it short. I think hers are a little too long. Maybe make it four instead of five. Now, the next section is the hard one. Relevant experience. Now, what she's done is she probably had a job description of some kind. And what she has done is if that job description said must have skills in this and this and this, she's taken those skills and put them here. So if her uh, job description said must have skills in project coordinating, personnel and payroll, training supervised. She took those words or phrases out and put them on your, her resume. And then underneath that, here are the things that I have done that has something to do with that skill. Okay. And in that way, you're not, do you see any dates there? No, no dates. It's just I have life, life skills. And for this young man yesterday, he's, he did have customer service skills. He did build his own computer. He did help people put computers together. So he put them under certain categories of, of, that he thought the employer might want to see. Now he's going to, as long as you're working, you're going to be changing your resume every year. So don't, you know, don't, don't just say, oh, God, it's done. You know, it's not done. But you're going to tweak it and tweak it and tweak it. So, and every job that you look for needs a different resume. You'll have a different objective. You may have s similar things for profile. You may have similar things for relevant experience. But you want it to go towards the job that you're applying for. Now, what I do like about this one also, they want your employment history. They want to know where you've worked. Now, how many of you have gaps in your employment history? You've got spaces of time. OK, common thing. What, what you do then is leave, you're going to leave it the way it is. You're not going to lie on it. But put it the way it is. And then when you are at the interview, you bring it to their attention. Or in your cover letter, which we're going to get to, you're going to bring it to their attention. Uh, in that way, um, how many of you were stay-at-home homemakers. Nobody here. Wow. Because <laughs> that's a big skill in itself, being, being a homemaker. But it is something that you could use as a filler. When I first got into career planning, this was again 100 years ago, m my clients were out of the ACI. Anybody know what the ACI is? Prison, right? Prison. Yeah. Prison. So, we had some interesting types of jobs <laughs> that, that we had to talk about. And so we talked about uh, being self-employed. <laughs> or you know, and in some ways, how were you self-employed? So making it so that it, you uh, be, let me give you a, a question. Um, if, you were, if you were a drug salesperson, what skills do you have? Pardon? Sales. 
marketing, sales, distribution, <laughs> knowledge of location. Yeah. Skills don't have good or bad. They're skills. Now, if, and, and my ex-husband, he, he, he worked with drug addiction uh, young people. And he had one kid that made probably 18, I'm um, being a little generous here, probably uh, two or three thousand dollars a week just selling drugs. This kid is going to have a tough time getting into real life. But what skills this kid has. So if he can be redirected and take those skills and put them into a, a legal type of job, my God, he's good. He's good. So there's no, no good or bad about what you can do. It's how you use it that, that counts. But back to here. So you're going to figure out what does this employer want? What happens if you don't get a job description? What I would do is go on to like monster.com and put in a job title and see what types of skills they need. Uh, and in that way, you're going to say, all right, I have this skill, I have this skill, I have this skill. And then underneath that, the things that I have done to fit into that. Uh, now, under employment history, then this is a history of what you've done. So if you have gaps, put, leave them there. You're not going to lie about it and uh, you can talk about it during the interview. Now, again, with your education. Your education is the most recent thing. So what I would take with your education is scooch it around underneath profile. Now, I like the way they set up this education because it's where you went to school, and then two columns of types of courses that you, could, you have taken that fit into the job that you're applying for. So let's say that you, you're interested in computers, you don't have enough knowledge, but you're taking computer courses, scooch that into your education. Okay. And very, very useful there. Now, something I want you to scribble out would be references available upon request. We no longer use that. That's old stuff. Okay. But feel free to give me a call and have me review your resume. Again, I'm here. Uh, two Mondays a, a, a month, so it's not a whole lot. But if you can go to Fall River, I'm there. And I'm very happy to go over your resumes with you to, to kind of make some suggestions uh, to kind of get you. Sometimes you just need to get started, and you don't know where to get started. Come see me. You need, you need another pair of eyes. But this is just a quick packet of resume writing. And let's talk about letters. They're miserable to write, right? If you've ever written one, hard, because you don't know quite what to say. So what I've done here is just put together some samples. Now, if your cover letter looks like this, would you, you as a reader, would you read it? No. 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 Keep in mind that your reader is tired. They're upset that they have to read this stuff. And if you make it hard for them, they're not going to bother. They usually have three piles. The, oh, this looks really good pile, and the, eh, kinda, and the, oh, God, you gotta forget it pile. So you want your resume and cover letter to look right so that you're going into the right pile. Now, so on page, on page two, this is just basically an overview. And if you know, if you take time to read this, you're going to get some good ideas on the why you have to write a cover letter. And it often is because some people don't like reading resumes. They just want the cover letter and vice versa. So uh, on page three, this is a very generic cover letter. And so what it, you have your typical name, address, telephone number, all of that, the date, then you have the hiring person's name, address, tele uh, and, and address, and so on. So your job to start off with is who is in charge of hiring me? And so you want to send your cover letter to them. If you have to send it to HR, send it to two people. The person who really is in the position to hire you and the HR person, because they, they need something too. Now, going down. I'm breaking this into paragraphs. So dear so-and-so, 
please don't put down Mr. and Mrs. Hiring. <laughs> I've seen it. <clears throat> Uh, How about you? <laughs> yeah. yeah, dear Marge. <laughs> I've actually had, this is when I was on, on Durfee Street, a, a guy attend one of my workshops and then use me as a reference and they, he'd only known me for one hour. <laughs> yeah, and I had to tell the company, you know, he came to my workshop, he was a good attendant, he participated, and I had to stop there. So when you're looking for references, uh, make sure that you get their permission to do this. May I use you as a reference? I'm going to be applying for such and such a position. So, and in that way, keep them up to date on the jobs that you're applying for. Okay. Mm. Sometimes students ask, uh, faculty to mm, evaluate yes. letters of recommendation <clears throat> and unfortunately what we can attest to are things like how you did in the class mm -hmm. which doesn't always translate into whether you are a great supervisor <laughs> or what the job yeah. description so sometimes I tell students it wouldn't help you if I say that you were um, a good student in class especially if your attendance isn't so great <laughs> or those things that you know that might be so it's also very important to pick I think Point. Absolutely. Pick very carefully, just because someone says yes, they may not help you. There's also a way in which we write letters of recommendation mm. that we say we do it, but it doesn't help you. So if if, if Marge mm. wrote yes, he showed up. <laughs> you know, and, and, and in a nice way, what you what that tells the employer, right, is mm. that you don't even have a clue that you would ask her to be your your person. So yeah. I yeah. And it's sad. <laughs> yeah. So. And, and sometimes you might pick somebody who is not going to speak well for you. Mm -hmm. We've had that. We've had at the college here, uh, the employer said, you don't want to hire this person. And we said, what? <laughs> May we know why? No, but you just, you're better off not hiring them. And I've had this happen to me. One of my students was in early childhood. She plagiarized her papers. She was, she, quick class half the time and so when the employer called me I said no I probably wouldn't hire this person may I know why no <laughs> no I, I can't say why but this is I, I don't basically I, I don't think it's a good idea so sometimes your teachers are going to be very honest <laughs> with you and no no oh I feel that oh the reason I can't I can't say why I might get sued right. bottom line yeah, defamation of character. I'm not going to do that, but I'm just going to say I'm not at liberty to to say why. But it would be my my advice not to. In, in that time. So anyway, back to your cover letters. The first paragraph is how you heard about the job opening. So it's going to talk about that, and then. So it's so really nice if you get somebody referring you. At the suggestion of so and so, I am applying for the position of, and in that way, you've got a link, and you're always looking for that link. Then the second paragraph, you're going to find out about that job as much as you can and show enthusiasm about applying for it because it's attached to the things that you love to do. So throw, throw some passion in there. And then the last one basically is uh, a follow through. I'm a little iffy on the statement that says, I'll call your office early next week. What if the employer doesn't want to call? And so I would be careful about that. Um, if they're kind of extroverted types of person, yeah, call me, I'm fine. But we have a lot of people who say, I'm too busy to talk to you. You know, just send me your resume. So I would be careful about that and just maybe say, um, I'm available for an interview on such an such and such a date or you could call me the above address to set up an interview so co again cover letters are tough but if you can find out as much as you can about the job itself that's going to help with the resume so after interview um, how long after should I call good question good question I would wait at least two weeks you know how paperwork sits on your desk because you can't get to it so two weeks is a good rule of thumb uh, you're, and you just say, I'm, 
uh, two weeks ago I, I applied for such and such a position and I'm just calling on the status of my application and short and sweet. Okay. And then what I've done here is giving you some samples of types of cover letters. There's one called a T letter. It's basically a column of what you want, what I've got. And it's for the it's probably for somebody who's cut and dried and just want hey, cut cut to the chase. And you're give, you're giving them that. The following next ones are just examples of types of color cover letters. But make sure your cover letter goes into your words. You don't sound like a, a, a rewrite of this. But this gives you an idea of what it is that you can say. But I'm, again, I'm happy to proofread those and to um, look into how else you might be able to say something. On your cover letter, and I'll get off the stage here, on your cover letter, don't put in a bunch of eyes. Every second word is I, 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 I. You've got to use another word, and that's the hard part. Okay, so thank you very much, and we'll get off.